and the effects and the calamities that afflict the one who leaves taqwa, the regressions that occur due to his leaving taqwa. وَذَلِكَ مَعْلُومًا مِنَ الدِّينَ ضَرُورَةً And this is known by necessity in this religion. You should know what happens to people who don't have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, terrible things happen to them, both in this world and the next. وَذَلِكَ مَعْلُومًا وَآفَتُهُ مَعْلُومَةٌ مَشْهُورَةٌ And the faults and blemishes that come from it are well known and famous. وَأُمَّهَاتُهَا عَشَرًا and the matrices from which they emerge are ten. And so the matrices are ten. In other words, there's ten things that happen as a result of not having taqwa. And all of them are vast and of great consideration. The first one is humiliation that occurs immediately. Humiliation that occurs later, in other words, in the next world. So you will be humiliated in this world by the unseen world as well, because the angels see you. And then the self becomes what they call self-loathing. People that do a lot of ma'asiyah, they actually hate themselves, which is a state of humiliation. It doesn't matter who they are and how much they pretend, they hate themselves. It's the nature of the soul. The soul cannot do wrong without being affected. They might be just so distracted and so asleep, they're not taking notice of it, but that's the reality of their state. The third is being branded or marked with the brand of corruption. The fourth one is the existence of the punishment if it doesn't occur in the next world. The fifth one is the possibility of being exposed to a bad seal. In other words, that you die out of Iman. The sixth one, being exposed to the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa al-qasima. And if that happens, it will destroy you. As-sabi'atu. تفويت فضيلة الفتح في العلوم. The seventh one is the fact that you lose the possibility of having openings to the sciences, to knowledge itself. That you lose the possibility of فتحات from Allah. Allah can open the you can open the Quran up and see things nobody's ever seen before. You, you can see openings about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's creation. Allah can reveal many many things. One of the Imam al Junaid's students went out once. And he'd been doing dhikr. He went out and all the plants started telling them all their medicinal properties. People wonder where they got all this herbal knowledge from. <laughs> I mean, how'd they work that out? They just try it and does this and that. Some people say that's how they did it. The acupuncture points, how'd they work all that out? There's openings from Allah. How do you think these people worked all this stuff out? You know the parallax view in astronomy? How'd they work that out? These are futuhat. They're opening. I mean, how did Newton work all those things out? Really, Allah gives people opening. If you're in a state of corruption, you're not going to get these openings. It just darkens your heart more and more. The eighth one is that your actions generally will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's like you're wasting your time. التاسعة وجود التطبيق تطبيق عن العمل The ninth one is the fact that you will be held back from doing good works. Your facade, your corruption will actually prevent you from doing good works. يثبطك العاشرة حسرة فوات المقصد الأكمل The tenth one is the grief يا حسرة The grief of having missed the greatest goal, the most complete goal. Because we're all going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point is, is to realize that in the dunya and to have knowledge of Allah. It's a wajib to have ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya. It's wajib to know Allah. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know that there's no God but Allah. The highest tawheed is the tawheed al-dawqi. 
experiential tawheed. It's not tawheed al-aqli. The kuffar can learn tawheed al-aqli. They can learn uh, Joharat al tawheed Some of them know it better than a lot of Muslims. Really, Elgood wrote a commentary. He translated a nesafi which is a complicated middle text in Maturi the Aqida. And there's a non-Muslim from Columbia University, 1920s, who translated the book, excellent translation. He understood it very well. You can't translate that stuff if you don't understand it. But that's just understand intellectually. This is that you actually have missed this golden opportunity in this theater of enlightenment. We are in a theater of enlightenment. This was created for human beings to recognize their Lord. That's what this whole earth is for. That's why Allah made this earth. He made it so people could know Him. And if you don't do that while you tarry on this earth, through taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you've wasted the opportunity, and this is hasra. Once you realize the opportunity that you let slip through your hands in this life, it's regret and remorse. مَنْ حَيْثُ لَا تُفِيدُكَ النَّدَامَ The nadama has no benefit. Your remorse is of no benefit. Once you leave this world, it's over. This is your opportunity right now. وَلِكُلِّنْ مِنْ هَذِهِ دَلِيرٌ يَطُولُ ذِكْرُهُ Each one of these has proofs that would take a long time to explain, so he's not going to do it. Trust him. وَيُعْرَفُ فِي مَنْ اتَّصَفَ بِالْمَعَاصِي أَمْرُهُ أَعَاذَنَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ مِنْهَا وَزَجْرَ قُلُوبُنَا آمِينَ وَجَوَارِحَنَا عَنْهَا آمِينَ فَإِنُّهُ الْوَلِيُّ الْكَرِيمُ وَالْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ So he says that he is known, the one who is qualified by his wrongs in his affair. He is known. وَيُعْرَفُ فِي مَنْ اتَّصَفَ بِالْمَعَاصِي أَمْرُهُ These things are known in those who their lives are filled with disobedience to Allah. Those ten things that he just mentioned, if you want to go see them, you can see them out there in the world. You can see them. The human degradation, the humiliation. You can see it in all these people out there. How they live their lives. The suffering that they go through. It's all because they're in a state of disobedience to Allah. There's no other reason. Their depression is all disobedience to Allah. All the sicknesses of their hearts. All these things. It's all a result of disobedience. That's the bottom line. And then he says, May Allah protect us from this. May He prevent our hearts and our limbs from falling into it. 